the Hawthorne Football Club. It was only eight and a half years ago when they recorded a third straight premiership and were, if not the best, one of the greatest teams in AFL-VFL history. In those years, they were almost unbeatable, and when it got to grand final day, they were an unstoppable force. With the likes of Jordan Lewis, Sam Mitchell, Luke Hodge, Jared Ruffhead, Josh Gibson, Sil Rioli, Ben Stratton, and so many more, and led by head coach Alistair Clarkson, the Hawks were a scary prospect for many years. But in 2016, the premiership streak ended. The Hawks, however, were still a good team but just not what they once were. Which is understandable, you can't be on top forever. And in 2018, the Hawks finished fourth on the ladder, but went out in straight sets against the much fancy Tigers and then the Demons. And this was the last time Hawthorne made the finals. Now, to be fair to Hawthorne, they were only one winner away from sneaking into the finals in 2019, but at the time, it felt like it was an end of the era for the dominance of the Hawthorne Football Club. And questions did start to be raised about if Hawthorne's team was too old, if Alistair Clarkson was the man to rebuild this club, was Clarko willing to bottom out to rebuild this team? Well, in 2019's trade period and free agency period, it didn't seem like Clarko had many thoughts about a rebuild and bottoming out, as the Hawks would go on and recruit Sam Frost from the Melbourne Football Club and Jonathan Patton from the GWS Giants. But we did see some senior players leave the club at the time, which included letting Grant Birchall head to the Brisbane Lions, and we saw the retirements of Jared Ruffhead, Will Langford and Ryan Schoenmakers, as well as the delisting of 43 gamer in Caden Brand. So they did lose nearly 650 games of experience, but two of those were retirements, so not exactly the coach's call. And they weren't exactly rebuilding the traditional way by moving on a lot more of their senior players and bringing in youth. Now the Hawks used only four picks in the national draft and rookie draft across the 2019 offseason, which included Will Day with their first round pick, Finn McGuinness in their second round pick, and Josh Morris in their fourth round pick as well as Emerson Jacker in the rookie draft. Now, of course, Will Day is now a star of the competition, and McGuinness is a great tagger, so it definitely wasn't a bad draft, but not a lot of young players coming through for Hawthorne off the 2019 offseason. Now, moving into 2020, the AFL season was one of the most unique ones we've ever had to endure, as the season drastically changed due to the pandemic. Games were reduced to 17, and matches were mostly based outside of Victoria, and Hawthorne only played two games at the MCG across the whole season. Now, Hawthorne on the field, unfortunately, had their worst result in terms of ladder position since 2005, as they would finish in the bottom four. But of course, as most people would say, the 2020 season could almost be counted as a mulligan for most teams. But in the off-season, we did see some sort of change in a turnover of the list. Not so much in the trade hand, as they only recruited Kyle Hardigan from the Adelaide Crows and Tom Phillips from the Magpies. But they did go a lot harder in the draft, as they used four picks, and they did pick up one player in the rookie draft. Now, you have to remember that this draft pool was quite smaller in 2020 than the previous years, as, of course, it was affected by the COVID era. Now, unfortunately, from the 2020 draft, they really didn't do that well. Only Seamus Mitchell has proved to be a decent player so far. But one of the best pickups in 2020 wasn't even in the offseason. John Newcomb was recruited as a mid-season draft pick from their VFL side in the Box Hill Hawks. And it was suspected that Sam Mitchell was one of the big reasons in getting Newcomb to the club. And this may have been the first time when the higher-ups at Hawthorne saw the potential of Mitchell being able to rebuild this club through youth. Now, Hawthorne did move some more senior players off their list, which included Paul Piopolo, Ben Stratton, Ricky Henderson, and James Frawley. But again, three of these four players had retired. So again, not exactly the coach's call. Now, moving into 2021, the Hawks did improve on their win-loss record with seven wins, 13 losses, and two draws and finished 14th on the ladder. But of course, this season was five games longer than the pandemic-affected year in 2020. Now, in July of 2021, the Hawthorne Football Club announced that Sam Mitchell would be the successor to Alistair Clarkson and would become the full-time Hawthorne coach at the end of the 2022 season. However, just a few weeks later... Hawthorne announced that Clarkson would be stepping aside at the end of the 2021 season. So after 17 seasons, this was the end of Clarkson's run at the Hawthorne Football Club and will always be seen as one of the greatest coaches in AFL-VFL history. But Hawthorne at the time knew the former superstar in Sam Mitchell was the man to lead this club forward. Now in the off-season, Mitchell did have a little bit of a start moving into some youth. Long-time servant of the club in John Segler was moved to the Cats and replaced by Max Lynch from Collingwood. They also let go 97 Gamer and Tim O'Brien, as well as the retirement of Sean Burgoyne and delisting of Hartley. But there wasn't a whole lot of changes in Sam Mitchell's first off-season period. But this is just the beginning of the Sam Mitchell era. 
So in his first season, Hawthorne performed a little bit better than the previous year as they recorded eight wins and 14 losses, which was one win better, but the same amount of points on the ladder at the end of the season. And this is when Sam Mitchell started his big rebuild, getting rid of the old guard and replacing it with youth. So on the trade front, we saw experienced trio in Jack Gunston, Tom Mitchell, and Jago O'Meara move away from the club, which combined for over 530 games of experience out of the door. We also saw the retirements of Ben McAvoy and Liam Shields, who had over 500 games of experience. We also saw the delisting of the experienced pair of Daniel Howe and Kyle Hardigan, who had over 250 games of experience. So overall, just on those players alone, that is over 1,260 games of experience gone from the football club. Now, the only player that Hawthorne picked up in the trade period and free agency period was Lloyd Meek from Fremantle, which was involved in the O'Meara trade, and Carl Amon as a free agent from Port Adelaide. Now, also don't forget that Sam Mitchell also had plans to use Chad Wingard as trade bait, and Luke Bruce was suspected to have been wanted by the GWS Giants, but he wanted to stay a Hawk. So that could have been even more games lost to experience, but the Sam Mitchell era at the club was coming into full effect at Hawthorne. It went into that year's draft with two first-round picks, where they got Cameron McKenzie at pick 7 and Josh Weddle at pick 18. So the plan to push Hawthorne into the next era with young Hawks was on track, and everyone was wondering how they would go with Mitchell's new changes. Well, to start off with, it wasn't very good at all. At the start of the 2023 season, Hawthorne had a horror start. With three of their first four games being nine-plus goal defeats, they only had one win from their first nine games, and they were rock bottom of the ladder at the end of round nine. And remember, this is the year that North Melbourne had a 20-game losing streak, and West Coast were getting smashed by 10 goals basically every single week. Now, earlier in the season, around the middle of March, we saw journalist in Damian Barrett come out and suggest that the Hawks' recruitment in the off-season was a form of tanking. Business this year of, of trying to win as many matches as they can, and it, it's, a, it's a form of tanking to what they've done this year. Now, of course, Sam Mitchell came out and denied those claims, but when they were sitting rock bottom at the end of round nine, of course the microscope was going to be put on the club. But in round 10, we saw the turning point for the Hawthorne Football Club. In a game that no one really thought twice about, Hawthorne came out with a vengeance against the 17th place West Coast Eagles down in Tasmania. It was a massacre, as the Hawks would smash the West Coast Eagles by 126 points. And even though these two sides were on the same amount of wins and were 17th and 18th on the ladder, there was a stark difference between the two sides. And this really got the Hawks up and going. As after this game, between rounds 11 and 13, they would win two of their next three games. And round 13 was a significant building block for the Hawks as they went on to beat the Brisbane Lions, who of course were a grand finalist in that year. So from round 13 to the end of the season, they would beat both grand finalists and push other big sides in many games. And even though they were pretty inconsistent at times, it was expected as they were a young team. But their best proved it could compete with anyone. And with a lot of senior players at Hawthorne leaving the club in the off-season in the previous year, it gave more opportunity for younger players. James Sicily becoming the new captain of the club had a career best year with an All-Australian jacket. Will Day moving into the midfield saw him have a career best year winning the Hawks BNF. We saw Jai Newcomb and Connor Nash finishing second and third in their BNF respectively. And so many more younger players who thrive with more responsibility, which they probably don't get if those senior players stayed on the list. Now, even though the Hawks still finished 16th at the end of the season, there was so much more promise from the wider public and seemingly the club itself at the end of the season. And the added bonus of Hawthorne's great second after their season was the fact that they were attracting interest from players out other clubs. So looking at Hawthorne's last off season, they only lost Tyler Brockman to the West Coast Eagles, Jacob Kaczynski to the Tigers, and then Brendan Ryan to the Brisbane Lions, who were replaced by better ins on the trade table front, which included Jack Ginevan from the Pies, maybe or Chol from the Gold Coast Suns, as well as the return of Jack Gunston, and they also picked up Massimo Gembrazio, who has been one of the highest rated wingmen across the comp this season. And because of the mass exodus of experienced players over the past few years, other than the unfortunate forced retirement of Max Lynch, they didn't lose a lot on the delisting and retirement front. Now, the Hawks still went into the draft with four picks, which they used on Nick Watson at pick five, Will McCabe at pick 19, Bodie Ryan at pick 46, and then Cal Shadir at 56. So moving on to this season, Hawthorne were into their second year after the mass culling of senior players, Sam Mitchell's third season as head coach, and after a promising end to the 2023 campaign, there were some decent expectations on the Hawthorne Football Club. However, to say they started poorly was an understatement. Hawthorne started the season with five straight losses and were just in front of North Melbourne on the ladder. They did record their first win in round six against the Roos, and since then they have been flying. 
Between round 7 to 16, Hawthorne have won 7 of their past 9 games, and one of those losses was a heartbreaker against Port Adelaide, where they choked in the last quarter after having a 41-point lead in the third quarter of that game. But getting back to the positives of the Hawthorne Football Club, they are on the verge of finals this year which has so many Hawthorne fans excited about the prospect of the potential of the brown and gold returning to the glory days of the mid-2010s. And even if Hawthorne don't make the finals this year, Sam Mitchell deserves so much praise. From people suggesting his club was tanking, the silencing his doubters, and getting his club on the verge of finals shows the true character of the man. So Hawthorne right now are one of the most exciting clubs in the AFL. And with so much room for this young Hawks team to grow, they are going to be a scary prospect for years to come. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Now I like to do these little outros at the end and explain maybe a little thing of why I've done these sort of videos. But even though I'm actually a Swans fan for any new viewers watching this, I do have to really give the praise to someone like Sam Mitchell who has done so much for this club in such a short amount of time. So that's why I thought this video was very interesting. I'm trying to do video essays, one for a team and then one about something to do with the AFL. So I thought this week I'd talk about Hawthorne. I mean, I know they lost this week against uh, the Cats. So that was a little bit unfortunate. Kind of really hope that they did win this week to make this video a little bit more exciting as well but and like I said in the video if they don't make finals this year I still think that's fine I think this team is built for greatness in the next couple of years but as always I do appreciate your guys' feedback on these sort of videos so please leave a comment down below of what your thoughts are on Hawthorne going forward of course make sure to share this to a mate if they're as big of Hawks fan or big as AFL fan as you and enjoyed the video make sure of course to like and subscribe and if you'd like to show a little bit of extra support on the channel then of course we do have channel membership enabled on the channel you get a bunch of exclusive perks which include live stream perks when we stream once a week for AFL games where I actually commentate them. You also get early access to our videos on this channel, the video essays, as well as early access to the Boundary Riders podcast and early access to the Twinners podcast as well, which is a, me and my brother's comedy podcast. So if any of that interests you guys, then make sure to click the channel membership link down below. Again, thank you for listening. Thank you so much for the support and we'll catch you all next time.